The Mini Direct has us very excited for spring and what lies beyond, but we're still in a little bit of a video game lull. So today we're talking about some under the radar Nintendo Switch games that you can get excited about. What's going on everybody? It's Zach from Switch Force. Gabe is here and we're going to give you four of our favorite lesser known not off discussed Switch games, and then we want you to let us know in the comments what under the radar Switch games you love. We're going to try to compile an ultimate community list, but for now, we've got two each that we're going to share as we wait for things like Kirby Star Allies, Drunk Gun Country, Tropical Freeze, Dark Souls Remastered, and more. There are some really cool stuff coming this week, Zach, but you know, in the weeks leading up to this, there hasn't been a whole lot going on, and it's a great time to revisit some of these things that might have, you know, kind of gone under the radar, like you said, and now is a good time to play them. You got one, Zach? You could start with you. I will start with the, the gem of all gems. The diamond in the rough. The greatest game that I didn't know existed until I played it. And it is absolute multiplayer mania. The game, everyone, is Astro Bear's Party. Now, at first blush, this looks like something that was created for a local PBS station on a shoestring budget for six-year-olds. But I am telling you that at four ninety nine dollars ABP is one of the best multiplayer experiences on Switch. And this is not a joke. This is dead serious. It is so much fun. You are creating trails across small, medium, and large-sized planets with these different bears and trying to stay alive the longest without crashing into your own or your opponent's string. You can jetpack around, you can speed boost, and you can play with two to four players locally. So good, so fun, quick rounds. I absolutely freaking love it. And I think... That it is a must-buy. At $5, Cubic Games has given you one of the coolest quick-play Switch games that anyone can get into. It's a two-button game, and it's so freaking good. I know you and your brother have been playing it a whole lot. You have played after dinner and things like that, and I think that it is a great game for just those occasions when you know you have a little bit of time after you know hanging out with your family just get a couple of these very quick games in. Um, I've played it on other platforms before, and I also think it's like really fun, so... Yeah, I completely agree with you on this. Um, I think that that can take us into my first pick here, which is also a multiplayer-centric game. It's going to be Nine Parchments. We covered it when it originally released, and it has a very like magical, beautiful art style. The co-op uh, is online. You can play, or you could also just play couch co-op with single Joy-Con. It's a fun little game. The combat can be a little repetitive. I don't like that the enemies are kind of just... It's very similar, just different elements, but that elemental aspect where if you see a fire enemy, you use the opposite element to be able to take them down. The boss battles are kind of fun, and just finding all those uh, parchments along the way. Um, I like it. Uh, you and I did play co-op online, worked beautifully, no like lag or anything to speak of. Um, it's a sizable game as well, um, and you can unlock characters, level up your characters. Uh, one through four players for this one, Frozen Bite, I think did a decent job with this one. It's not like one of the most amazing games, but the fun that we had, I think, speaks for itself. And we have that Let's Play up if you want to go check it out on our channel. But this one definitely flew under a lot of people's radar. It came out in December, and uh, I don't see it mentioned that often, and it's a good one. Yeah, it hit during the holiday season uh, when there's a lot of indie releases just kind of coming, uh, like Gangbusters. It's a very pretty game. The colors are vibrant. It looks good on the Switch. I agree, it's a little bit repetitive, but for 19.99, you can't really uh, complain about that too much. The boss battles are very interesting, and I like shooting Gabe with lightning. So yeah. this is definitely one to keep your eyes on. I'm going to go back towards the launch of Nintendo Switch. June 29th, a game called Goner hit, uh, and it came out in, on other platforms as well, but it is so much fun. I dumped at least a dozen hours into it, uh, and for 9.99, I feel like that is more than enough. Um, less than a movie ticket, and I got at least 12 times that out of it. Um, it's a roguelike with a really eerie, creepy style. It's very minimalist in its nature, but also very uh, eccentric and unique. I love the monsters. I love some of the power-ups. I love the way the mechanics work. Um, you basically have a, a gun and a head and a special. Um, there's a lot of uh, scoring and chaining to it as well which kind of keeps you pushing through um, and encor encourages more speed and more fluidity um, in your play as opposed to a lot of roguelikes which are more plotting um, and meticulous. This one is a little bit faster paced because that's a side-scrolling roguelike, uh, so it is manageable even at a higher speed, and it gets really hard really fast. It's something that took me a while to master, and it felt very satisfying once I was able to get out of sort of the first world and into the second world and eventually into the third world. A lot of cool, um, just weird music, sound effects, Strange art, I, I think that uh, anyone 
could get quite a bit of fun out of this roguelike from Raw Fury. Yeah, I played it when it originally came out as well. I love the difficulty to it, just mastering uh, the level and just getting a little bit further. Great, great feeling, and uh, I basically agree with your sentiments. I think it's a good one. It did come out some time ago, so if you missed it, you should definitely check it out. But that will bring me to my next pick here, which is Death Squared, a game that is oh so fun. It looks very simple. You and your friends, or you by yourself, uh, control these squares, and you're just trying to get on these platforms to uh, complete puzzles, but they are difficult. Communication is key. Uh, precision is key. There are like 80 like puzzle levels and story levels there's uh 44 player levels and there's a lot here it's a fantastic party game although you might be screaming at your friends uh, just because you know getting so close to finishing one of these puzzles and then like messing up uh, kind of just messes it all up and you got to start all over again it is a really good one i know that you and jake got a chance to play this as well uh, how'd you guys feel about it oh we absolutely loved it it's a fantastic uh co-op game um, in the vein of like Portal 2, I mean, obviously less complex. It's not fully like running and jumping around 3D. You're little blocks, but the way that the puzzles sort of take place, the way that you have to go here and then sequentially send your partner over there, and there's a little bit of trial and error and a little bit of, uh, you know, fine tuned movement. I really like it. I think it's an excellent, excellent cooperative game. Um, it ranks up there for me with Overcooked. It's one of my favorite co ops on Switch. It's $15. Um, you can play one, two, or four, which is interesting. No three players. Um, but, like, I like the fact that you can do things solo, you can do things with two people, um, and there also are separate four-player levels, so that's kind of cool as well, um, to, you know, have bigger challenges or whatnot. They also have levels that are too hard for the main game, so difficulty is something that can go to the moon uh, in Death Squared, and I like that. I like that it pushes you and they're not simplistic puzzles. Um, you will spend a good chunk of time on some of them. It's really great, just tabletop, grab your Joy-Con and Go game, and SMG Studios killed it so there are four titles for you guys to check out you got astro bears party at five bucks you got nine parchments at 20 goner at 10 and death squared at 15 let us know in the comments down below what under the radar switch games you've been playing what under the radar switch game is your favorite and which ones do you think need some more love we'll try to compile a community list until that time everybody thanks so much for watching a fantastic day for myself and gay make sure to subscribe stay up to date on all the latest and greatest from these small little switch gems and we will keep you posted on future ones until then switch force out